everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Final Siren, joined by Duck and Oz from the Purple Rain. Oz, what a fantastic win by the Frio Dockers. Absolute go to woe. Probably not a go to woe, but from go, we didn't start too well, but we woed it. We yeah, won we the first it. quarter. We did that. That's all that counts. We won the first quarter. That's, That's all, all that counts. counts. And then from then on, it was uh, it was W City. Yeah, look, the boys were up and about, and fair to say that J Lo pre-game was talking about how the boys would um, essentially come out, and you'd see a different version of Fremantle, which is great. As Duck just um, shuffles across, mate, got to see my beautiful <laughs> face, Oz. <laughs> I'm trying to. Hide I know you want to yeah. hide, but I'm all about yeah. the me, me, me yeah, stuff. Yeah, I want to yeah, see. Correct. I want people to see the tan yeah. hat as well no, because no, sorry. we got to represent the country, mate. Yes. It's country round. We had the boot scooters out there. We had yes. them uh, dancing to Nutbush City Limits. Yes. Uh, at three quarter time, we I think have it started with that. It made the, it made the players get a little bit, I guess, yeah. drowsy. The, I mean, they ended up conceding in that in that last quarter. They gave and then a little bit of snip. Uh, I think they had three goals to none at one stage and then the Dockers managed to bounce back and, and finish off the game really strong. 14-9-90, uh, 3-2, 9 7 61. And considering I was, I think, in the first quarter, Essendon seemed to have the ball on their terms. And it was interesting because it kind of reminded me, and I don't want to do a bit of cricket because I know you love cricket and oh, I know I love you love cricket. baseball. Yeah, You're I a massive baseball. basketball fan because, you know, T20, basketball, future, yeah. future cricket. But yeah, yeah. it felt like a little bit of a, a kind of just hold them off, hold them off, you know, hold the, hold the damn wall, hold it from breaking. And then we were able to hit them on the bounce, which was really, really good. They made a couple of really crucial errors in that first quarter, and that led to goals. A couple of cat tens um, came out our way, which was really good. But, you know, like after that, we just dominated, and we were able to play the way we wanted to play. The thing that I really loved and I thought really set up the game was Lukey Ryan's ability to sag off the contest, work back, and then we'd switch to him, and then he just got it and go. You know, like over the last couple of months... And, and, and probably over the last couple of years, we've really seen this real, it's not necessarily hap hesitance, but it's, it's, a, it's an inability to switch with intent. Mm. And I thought that at times tonight, we got it, bang, went to Lukey Ryan, and then he got it on, and he got it, the game op- opened and up and about. And I thought he was nearly, if not best on ground, close to it. Um, you know, with his 31 disposals and 663 Ooh, metres gained. 666, six, six, which would have been good. Devilish, that would have oh, been. Um, but, you know, I thought he was fantastic. Oh, is there anyone that you want to talk about in regards to good yeah, players? Well, look, first of all, when you talk about intent, um, I thought every time we had the opportunity to switch with intent, we did. And you could tell um, by the way in which we were kicking the football um, across the, um, the halfback line in particular. But if I could just point out one guy who I thought had close to if not his best game was Liam Henry oh clearly and his best game mate no he, I don't think there's a I don't even think there's a second beautiful. I think he was outstanding tonight so if you if you look at how he started mate it was fantastic he was even when the ascendancy was with Essendon early on what Liam Henry was able to do was insert himself into contests and just try and nullify and hold back. He was one of the reasons why we were able to just nudge the contest back on our terms. Um, I thought he was more confident by foot, which was fantastic. And look, obviously in terms of his disposal count, 32 disposals, 519 metres gained, 25 kicks is what I want to see from um, more from the young guy. And I thought definitely today, it would have been nice to, if he had to kick a couple of snags, but oh, let's be honest, yeah. he had great opportunities putting himself in opportunities to score. But at the end of the day, you look at how his performance can trigger other performances and it's like the butterfly effect you know Darcy comes in you could talk about that in a second Darcy comes in it triggers just different performances from players and Henry's one where he comes in he makes this fantastic array of uh, kicking across the across the board he's, he's marking well he's doing what he does and I think it, it just really had the boys up and about in that forward line too yeah I thought like the Sean Darcy key and look I was a and I, I'm, I'm more than happy to say this. I, I didn't think Jackson and Darcy would work together at the start of the year. I thought it was going to be two Ruckman. Doesn't really work. Luke Jackson is a freak. Let's let's put that out there. He's a freak. He's, freak. he's Unicorn. unbelievable. Unicorn. The big dogger is Unicorn. unbelievable with the way he plays. Even like in that last quarter, he got his hand in like a little oh, steel. Yeah. Yeah. Like a little steel yeah. in basketball. He, he has a basketball background, he I does. believe. Oh, does he? Oh, who but would have Luke Jackson, but... With the big onions, the big hodor, the big swaggy, coming back in and allowing 
Jackson to get into that forward role and link up into the forward line. And I think even to a point where Tracy at times pinched hit in the ruck yep. rather than Jackson. Yep. But Jackson was really outstanding. I thought he just had he just straightens us up. He gets our forward line going. Yep. I thought as well the other thing is is that Jai Miss in that second quarter. Now we had this conversation up in the box, Oz. Does Jai Miss kick all his goals down the city end? I think most of his goals are coming from the city end. Although, albeit his first goal was at the other end, but yeah. certainly, yeah, mo- like you said, I-, I think if you look at it, most of his goals are coming that end. Did get under one or two, but um, I-, I think one of the things we like about Jai is his contest and his repeat efforts. And again, for those people in um, the eastern states, if you will, those people in Victoria, there is a guy other than who's been touted coming out of Victoria for a rising star, and Jai is that guy. Yeah. And that mark. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Well, that, I mean, they're the things you can do. And, and as, a, as a developing key forward, it really makes you, as a Dockers fan, just it, it makes you walk taller because you're like, oh, man, the forward line's been such a problem for the yeah. Dockers for such a long period of time. Apart from a, a two-year period with, with Tony Modra and, a, a, you know, it was probably about five or six years with, with Pav as a forward. Apart from that... They're really, we've really, in our whole history, you know, in our 28 years, we've never really had a good key forward. So, you know, like, 8 out of 25 ain't that great. Ain't that good of a return. But we've got one now, you know. And, and the forward structure, can you just tell us about the forward structure as well? Because I, I like, you go Jackson, you go Tracy, and you got Jai. Yeah. And those three guys, in terms of how, not only their aerial capability, but at ground level, and shout out obviously to Swidar as well and shout out to um, to Walters and his role and also to Schultz who had a couple of great pressure acts and particularly that one um, uh, where Schultz has just cannonballed through to allow Jai to snap across his body for another Dockery uh, review if you will but it still came our way but yeah. um, that, that pressure in the contest makes a huge difference so those those three keys are allowing the other guys to get involved. Tell us about that. Well, I think you've got you've obviously got you've got the triple J's, the three key forwards, and then you've got the triple S's, the small forwards, and then you've got Freddie, mm. who's kind of a, a yeah. you know, he's played his fiftieth game, he's kicked two goals, he's had two goal assists. You know, for a guy who had nine disposals to have four straight goal involvements by kicking and then um, and then being an assist on that, I thought he was really great. He kicked really crucial goals, yeah. but I thought that that Schultz and Switter got back to what they're known for. Just attack on the ball. You know, it's not necessarily them kicking goals. It's the disruptive nature that they bring to the forward line that allows us to win games. That's the key. That's what they're in the team for. And we've missed that over the last two weeks in particular, I feel. So those guys have bounced back. They've answered what's happened, had to happen, and that's been really, really outstanding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I believe we are going to be joined by Michael Frederick. You coming in, mate? Come on in. How you going, Dustin? Or Duck and Oz? How you going, mate? Good. How are you, mate? Good. Put those on and make sure you hang on to your uh, your mic. We're joined by Michael Frederick. 50 games, mate. When you got drafted to the club, 50 games, was that ever, was it just start with one and then work from there? But, you know, how do you feel after playing 50 games for this great club? Uh, definitely start with one and go from there. I'll probably, I don't know, I'll just... I think a little goal of mine once I started getting into the team and after I got injured and played the full or most of the season last year was to uh, reach 50 games and just play week to week consistently and I think I've ticked that so far Um, and yeah I guess grateful for the opportunity that Frio gave me and um, yeah just just pretty pretty happy I guess in a sense I don't think it's too big of a deal but um, yeah pretty pretty happy. Nice now mate the the evolution of Michael Frederick obviously you come in here mate you've got huge speed huge potential but now we're seeing more of a well-rounded polished player talk us through how you've been working in order to get to where you are now. Um, Just consistency consistency with routine Um, you know I guess like when you come in the door um, when you get drafted you don't know what you don't know as they always say and um, sort of picking up on little things, picking the brains of the older boys and um, finding out what works for you week to week. So um, that's sort of been a gradual build and um, I think I've sort of 
maybe slipped away from that a little bit this year um, in some parts, but uh, since, I guess, last year to now, I've, in a way, been consistent with all that stuff with routine and that, so... Now, how did you feel having uh, Big Darcy back in the team this week? It, it meant that Jackson goes back into the forward line. Did you feel like the structure of the forward line was a little bit more sound with Big Dogger down there? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I guess last week we did miss Shawnee, but um, it's always a collective effort. It's not, um, I guess, we, I'm not saying that we lost because of one person, but um, it's always nice when you got, um, I guess, generally all your good ruckmen are just about your most important man on the ground. So um, when, when you've got someone like, Shawnee coming back off of injury, um, it's always always handy to have three tools down there. Yeah, nice. And look, we had a quick chat before. Uh, we're not sure if this is a legitimate statistic or not, but it appears every time we get a quick clearance out, you just seem to be on the end of, of the quick clearance and then the beautiful kick for goal. Do you find that that's something that helps you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I like to back myself in and have a crack, I guess. Um, and always, once the boys or someone says, take your 30, you just go, all right, I'll have a <laughs> um, As a forward line, we, we talk a lot about being selfless, but um, I guess the way we set up um, at, at the six, uh, 666 um, sort of probably helped that way. But And just being on our toes as forwards and reacting quicker than our men, and that probably got me those good looks. Now, you kicked probably the point of the year Talk us through. <laughs> I thought you were gonna you're gonna carry on with it after you put. Z- I mean, it was Zerk Thatcher that fell on his backside trying to tackle you. Yeah. What was going through your mind in that stage? Were you just tonguing it a bit and you just like get this ball out of here, or what was happening? I was pretty gassed. Uh, I thought he was gonna nail. I, th- well, I thought he did nail me. Um, <laughs> it was a good bench. Yeah. Oh, nah, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, um, mis- Miss tackle. But, um, <laughs> and I was pretty gassed, and I reckon at three quarter time I was walking in with Brando. And I said to him, I should have just kept running, but I was gassed. So I was, I was kicked it. I should have popped it. Nathan was over, uh, Fifey. He was mm. over the top for one. And uh, walking in at th- three-quarter time, I apologised. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, range kicking-wise, we think you could probably kick anywhere between sort of the 50-55 mark. Do you have, have you actually tested to see, you know, set shot-wise, how far back you can comfortably get it through, goalpost heights, kind of, you know, whatever it is? I haven't tested, but... Um, I remember in my first year, I had a set shot um, from pretty far out and nailed it just. So I think from then onwards, when, I, when I've had it around the same distance, I've sort of in the back of my mind go, all right, if I haven't passed it off, I've got to nail it now. <laughs> so I, I do back myself in yeah, um, it's good. a lot. Uh, the, I think there was one, the first one, I had Liam was streaming forward in the pocket and I could have kicked it to him and Shooter just told me to take my 30. So I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, always got to back yourself in when you go back. Now, how's the body feeling? Obviously, late withdrawal last week. A um, little bit of, uh, I guess, news around that yeah, you were on light duties yesterday. How, how is the body feeling? Yeah, good. Um, uh, the past couple of weeks, uh, sort of been up and down with my right ankle. Um, I think that by weekend, we had a training session on the Saturday and um, just woke up really sore and um, got through the Richmond game fine actually and then it was just that next day waking up was just so sore so I sort of managed that throughout the week and I was very close to getting up last week um, but I didn't feel like I would would have been able to perform at 100% for two hours so um, made the call in the morning and um, I guess that gave Sturdy an opportunity um, he was our travelling emergency and I'm sure he took, uh, he did take it with both hands um, up forward last week and kicked his two but um, yeah my body's good and happy, happy being out there Obviously, with the changes that we had this week, you know, the big ends, including yourself, it definitely looked like balance was good as well. What's your take on that and the balance, not only just with the big fella coming back, but obviously in the forward line as well? Do you feel like it's a little bit more even in contest and allows more ground ball and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, for sure. I think our thing, one of our focuses is um, uh, winning or halving contests ahead of the ball. That's one focus out of a few um, that we have come game day. And... Um, Knowing what the what the oppo defence is like, whether they um, generally, if oppo defence are good at ground ball in their defence, that means they work back really hard. So that's just us as forwards matching that um, when they roll back, and also they were I think they're the number one team from rebound 50 to inside 50 transition. So we had a focus as forwards to get up and out, so we can give them an angle and then force them to slow ball movement and force them long down the line. And I think we did that pretty well all night. Yeah, I thought it was awesome, especially after that first first 10 minutes. It looked like they were. Yeah. They were on top, and then after that, it was like completely shut down city, so really fantastic stuff. Now, they told one or two more questions, so we'll go into the, the regulatory last question. Weirdest unit at the club? 
Tubbsy. Yeah. Any weird stuff he's done this week or anything like that? Just oh, to... I haven't seen too much of him. He's just like... Oh. <laughs> too, many, too much to name. Too much to name. <laughs> okay, the big fella's over there. You can there, come so if you just... want to come ask him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michael, thank you very much for no uh, joining us today. And, and look, enjoy the, enjoy the win. No, fantastic on 50 games well played. Appreciate you know it. you're a fan favourite, but you back it up with fantastic play. So really well done. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks, mate. All right. Cheers, bud. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, mate. All righty. Michael Frederick. Game number 50, fantastic. Like I said, two goals, uh, can, two goal assists. Can nine, I throw this nine, to you? Yeah. Is there anyone more exciting with ball in hand, one-on-one, -on -one, than Michael Frederick? Well, mate, like I said, he nearly kicked the goal of the bloody century. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, yeah, like like I said to you, I was like, take grass and kick that goal. But yeah. look, unlucky. He, he would have been cooked. He's absolutely legged it for about 60 metres. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's had to stop prop take on a tackle it was a good bench yeah look and the other thing to think about mate if you're a defender is there anyone who you would not want to see coming at you at full pace oh it's that very it's very be. hard to tackle people at full pace uh -huh. it's very hard to tackle people yeah, yeah. full stop but to tackle oh, people at full get pace get you up and about i tell uh, you now all right Oz, let's uh let's wrap this thing up just about anyone else you want to talk about mate because it, it was another we, fantastic win by the dockers okay yeah we talked about him him check 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 uh I thought Walker's run and carry. Enjoyed Walker's run and carry today, yep. which was great. Um, and also, Jono kicking his goal. Yeah. That was great. Um, looked, say, looked, but went no. in and, and nailed it. Went back, boom. And he's starting to, again, he's starting to find his feet at AFL level. It's great to see. The young guys are coming through. You know, again, you, you've got to be very careful. You don't want to go on this business cycle up and down and yeah. peaks and troughs. But you, you do look forward with the future of Fremantle with rose-coloured glasses thinking, my goodness, it is looking very promising. Well, when you've got the likes of Jackson, Frederick... The unicorn. You know, Amiss. Wembyama. Sarong, Johnson, you know, Walker, Tracy, I thought was really solid tonight. Yep. Big Onions going again. Yep. You know, Ryan, um, I thought that, you know, that just all the boys actually got on board this week, which is... You know, to, to come off last week's loss and to, to respond with that effort, and that's that was the main thing, was the effort, was really outstanding, especially after that first 10 minutes. Yep. Especially after, after that first 10 minutes, it was just bang, no sniff, dominated the game, turned the game around, turned it in our favour. And if we can play like that going forward, there won't be too many teams that can beat us, Correct. mate. Because that ability to, like we said, switch with intent, get the ball inside the forward line, the guys like your Amiss and your Jackson, the little fellas like your Freddie and your Sonny and your Switter and your Schultz, you know, we are going to be a hard team to beat and we're going to make a lot of noise come September. Yeah, look, absolutely. And again, the way you want to be looking at it is it's cliche, but it is one game at a time where you're bringing your absolute best. Mm. And probably remiss for us not to ask the question about the amount of forward pressure that was on show today. I thought that was right up. Yeah. It was one of the major reasons why we were able to lock the contest in on our terms. And credit to, to the guys for coming back and taking the heat and understanding where we needed to be, listening to whatever the game plan was pre-game um, pre um, throughout the week and just executing. And albeit the first you know, 10 or so minutes wasn't, wasn't pretty, but after that, when we just, you know, cracked in, I thought it was fantastic. So well done yeah, to the boys. Yeah, and I think we've just got to finish the pot on this. Liam Henry, probably, if not best on ground, really showed, you know, like a lot of people pile pressure on him because he was a uh, first dra uh, round dra uh, draft pick. Sarong and Young before him, so it's like, well, Sarong's great, Young's great, what's yep. going on with Henry? I thought he had an outstanding game. If we can get more of the same from this young man, yep. we've got another great player the on pack. the wing, ready to go. And look, I, I just think it's it's so amazing to see him develop in front of our eyes. And, and you know, players are going to take a bit longer. Yep. You know, next week he might not have the best game, but we've just got to get games into these guys and back them in and trust them and, and trust the whole process. Yep. Oh, trust, the process. trust the process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 76ers. <laughs> All right, guys, on that note, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe, rate, and review. And why not give this a share wherever you are? Remember, if you're on YouTube, hit the hit the bell um, for the Frio Dockers. If you are a podcast listener, 
Remember, listen to The Purple Rain. We're at Purple Rain 95, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at The Purple Rain 95 on TikTok. Get around us as well. We do a Monday show and a Thursday show, previewing, reviewing, getting up and about. Oh, absolutely. What right. a win. Yeah, what a great win. Enjoy your Saturday night. Enjoy your week at work. Up and about again, the Dockers. Yeah.